Hello and welcome back to Against the Storm Overexplained, where today we're going to do our last tutorial mission on Rainpunk and Blight Rot. Some of this information might overlap with some of the stuff I talked about in the last video, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get started. Rainpunk is a technology that harnesses the power of charged rainwater to enhance industrial buildings. Let's try to install Rainpunk engines in this tool shop. Press the button to connect the pipes. You'll notice that it takes four pipes to connect the building. Each piped building is equipped with two engines, a primary one to improve production and a secondary one to improve working conditions. However, using Rainpunk comes at a price. The consumption of rainwater leads to the growth of a parasite known as blight rot. During drizzle and clearance, cysts retreat into their protective shells and pose no threat. However, during the storm, blight rot will attempt to corrupt your hearth and devour your villagers. Build a metallurgical complex in this region and repel the blight rot. So really quick, these two engines increases production speed, increases the chance of extra yields, increases the production speed. And then these give bonus resolve to folks that are working there. You can turn them both up, but since we don't have any water, and this one specifically uses storm water, because we don't have any water, we can't get these benefits yet. So I'm just gonna turn them all off right now. Rainpunk technology utilizes the unique properties of the rain to power advanced machinery. You can harness this technology by installing rain engines in your production buildings and fueling them with infused rainwater. Rain engines can increase production speed, improve the chance of additional yields, and reduce the workload on workers. To install rain engines, select a production building and navigate to the Rainpunk tab. These engines require pipes for installation and need to be fueled with rainwater to operate. Once installed, you can adjust their power levels, monitor their water consumption, and see the speed at which blight rot is generated. There are three types of infused rainwater. Drizzle water, which is green, clearance water, which is yellow, and storm water, which is blue. These can be collected from geysers found in glades or by using a rain collector. Each geyser contains only one type of water, and a geyser pump must be built on top of the geyser to extract it. Rain collectors gather rainwater based on the current season. Different buildings require different types of water. Drizzle water is primarily used in food production, clearance water for crafting and artisanry, while storm water is used to boost heavy industrial production. On difficulty levels higher than Pioneer, using rain engines to boost production will result in the growth of a parasite known as blight rot. The more infused rainwater is used in a production building, the faster the blight rot cysts will appear and eventually spread across the settlement. For more information, blah, blah, blah. So as usual, I'm starting with a path. There we go. And what do we have already? We've got an oven. We've got a tool shop. And it looks like we've got an herbalist camp we can start to staff pretty quick. Get some housing out there. Grab our workstation. I see we've already got a geyser here, so we should probably go ahead and put... Ah, we don't have access yet. We'll go ahead and grab the kiln, the workshop, and the mine. Now the workshop's interesting because it takes tier 2 materials to build, but it's way more efficient than 
the crude workshop. So I feel like I can actually destroy the crude workshop. Uh, I also probably am going to need a couple of woodcutter camps as usual. Mining basics. We want to make a mine. We want to mine up 20 copper ore. Well, we've got copper right here. So we can go ahead and drop a mine on that. Generous gifts and golden marrow. Two amber for every 20 sea marrow, or newcomers come with more goods. We'll pick generous gifts. And we're going to start making decorations immediately. Now, when it comes to mining, beavers are in an interesting position because they make great woodcutters because they obviously have that chance of doubling their yield. But they also get a bonus to their resolve by being in the mine. There's only 60, um, what's it, uh, the, the node only has 60 charges to it. Though later on in the game we'll be able to upgrade the mine to essentially delve more deeply and more greedily. Let's cut into this dangerous glade here. Staff one person in the workshop. And once again, only ten of each. Okay, mining basics is done, so we'll go ahead and deliver that for some biscuits and some beavers. And in fact, oh, yeah. we'll drop them in there for the resolve boost. Now, what do we have here? We've got some farmland, we've got some eggs, we've got a press, more copper, fallen lizard hunters. We can either pay for their funeral, or we can rob them. Robbing them gives us a bonus to our movement speed, some wine and some meat. And we don't really have the resources to pay for the funeral anyway. So, that's what we're doing. Put a small trapper camp here to start picking up these eggs. And also a smelter, which primarily turns copper into copper bars. We are in fact running out of space rather rapidly. We're gonna expand in this direction. Oh, the herbalist camp needs to be rebuilt. Okay. I didn't realize that it was... Okay, all of these need to be rebuilt. Got it, got it, got it. Now, produce coal, produce copper bars. I have not found any coal yet, so we're going to have to keep searching. I think this is the next glade we're going to cut into. But I also need to produce copper bars, which I can do at the smelter. I'm not going to worry too much about aesthetics at the moment. We 
do need bricks, something awful. Which we can get over here, but again, space is at a premium. We're gonna ditch the smelter before it even gets built. We'll drop a stone cutter camp out here so that we can start picking up that stone and turning it into bricks. New cornerstone and new people. All houses have room for more villagers. And every discovered forbidden glade lowers hostility. I'm not necessarily gonna be expanding to any forbidden glades. Let's go with crowded houses. Which completely wipes out any houseless folks or any houselessness in my settlement. What have we got here? Still no coal, unfortunately. So I guess next we're going to expand down into this one. Gotta find that coal. And in fact, I think we can now set up a second woodcutter camp. This whole area is just a mess. Just ignore it. It's fine. I do believe, though, that I can now make my smelter. Get you out of the way. I like to make my production buildings as close to my warehouse as possible. Hopefully for obvious reasons. Now, is there another way for us to make coal other than finding and mining it? Well, we've got this kiln, and what the kiln does is it turns wood into coal, essentially. So we're going to build one of those right here as well. And that should hopefully get us moving on this metallurgy order. This definitely means we want to get a fully staffed second wood cutting camp, though. Pull these two out of the stone cutter camp, put them in the kiln. You don't have to have all of your facilities fully staffed right away. In fact, sometimes that's the wrong way of going about things. And this smelter makes copper bars. Once again, let's see. Pull a couple of folks out of the mine. We'll put them in the smelter. I'm really only interested in the copper bars for now. And again, as you can see, like you can burn wood very, very quickly. Between making coal and making copper bars, I could end up burning through my, my wood stockpile very quickly. And remember, the most important thing, as we saw in the last video, is to make sure there is fuel for the ancient hearth. Because once that goes out, everyone leaves. You're at the highest level that you can currently reach. Definitely want to get some more bricks. And what have we here? We have a golden treasure stag, which immediately runs into this dangerous glade, and we want to chase after it. So we are right away going to change our path and have a nice, efficient route into here because we only have four minutes to get it done.
Copper bars are done. And in fact, now that we have all the copper bars we need, I'm going to stop producing them. And we're almost done with coal. When you are cutting into a glade with a timer, you do have to remember that it does take the, uh, the folks time to bring the wood back to the main warehouse. So if you find yourself really frustrated, that might be why. Okay, with the golden treasure stag, we have two options. We can catch it, take all of its treasure, but the forest will curse our riches, or we can release it and it will share some of its riches um, willingly. And we only have one minute and 25 seconds to make a choice or else it's gonna leave. We're gonna go ahead and release it which gives us a plus one to global resolve and 25 amber. What else we got in here? We have this altar of decay, which reduces hostility when a villager dies or leaves, which I'm not too super interested in, so I think we're gonna tear it down. And the mine has run out of copper ore, so for now we're going to abandon it. Because we have not gotten to the point where we can upgrade it yet. Metallurgy is done. So we'll go ahead and get a few more people and some pies. Our hostility is way up there, so we're going to unassign all of our woodcutters. And though it is going to get to zero, I'm going to go ahead and wait. I'm going to wait until the uh, resolve actually gets down to zero before I start doing anything like sacrificing in the hearth or anything like that. We can go ahead and rebuild this brick oven. We'll favor the, the beaver clan here. That gets us back to the drizzle. Neither of these looks particularly interesting to me because I'm not producing either training gear or reeds. So I'm gonna decline for 10 amber. And we're gonna pick up the small farm and immediately place that down. In fact, we've got two sources here. I think the first thing I need is some space. So we're gonna clear out this area here. You can place buildings on fertile ground, and when you move them away again, the fertile ground will still be there, so don't worry about that. I'm supposed to be producing pipes now, which I believe I can do in the workshop at the cost of copper bars. So we'll do that, but also that means that we're going to have to go back to our smelter and start making some more bars. I'm going to use coal instead of wood because you can see making a copper bar only takes one piece of coal while it takes five pieces of wood. And if we go to the kiln really quick, no, nope, that's not the kiln. If we go to the kiln really quick, we'll see that it takes 10 wood to make 5 coal. So making coal does actually increase efficiency, right? If we do a little bit of the division, it means that 2 wood equals 1 coal. But when we look at the smelter, it takes 5 times as much wood as it does coal. So there is a good reason to, to make coal even if you don't find it to mine it. We also have newcomers waiting. More people is definitely better.
especially once we get this second farm up and running. So it takes three copper bars to make two pipes. And we're actually going to stop them from producing anything else. We're only going to produce copper bars until we get, or I'm sorry, pipes until we get this uh, order done. I'm going to say that the correct place to put this farm is probably going to be in this corner right here. Usually there's like a corner missing, and that's usually the best place to put the farm. Not all the time, but usually. We've also got a bunch of abandoned caches that we can get rid of either with stone or with tools. With tools, we get um, reputation and amber. And I believe we can just go ahead and go to our tool shop. And we'll start making some tools. Uh, pipes are done. Hey, we finally got the geyser pump, so we're going to go ahead and immediately drop one of those down on this drizzle geyser here. We've also got a storm geyser here. But we really need our planks. So now that we're done making our copper bars, we can go ahead and start making planks again. but we've got to start producing wood a little bit more quickly. There we go. Once again, got to keep your eye on your fuel. All of my big negative events happen at Hostility 3, so I'm okay sitting at 2 for a little while. And in fact, I don't have to fire my woodworkers at all. Food production is increased by 10% for every 50 units of drizzle water stored. Well, we did just get a drizzle uh, geyser that we're about to, to put a pump on, so we'll go ahead and pick that one. People will grab the one with lots of food. And because it's our actual goal, we're going to take our drizzle geyser pump and we are going to upgrade it using two pipes and one wildfire essence. This means there's now a robot that's collecting for me, but I can still assign a person there to collect the water. But that's our option. We can also upgrade with a bunch of bricks and a couple more pipes to increase the capacity from 50 to 100. 
And then if we want, we can also build a second robot so that we don't have to assign anybody there at all. It's just automatically putting drizzle water into our tank. Our next thing is to produce three rain engines in production buildings. Okay. We'll start with this one. Now, we don't have enough pipes to upgrade this one, so for now, we're gonna assign a couple of folks to start collecting that rainwater. And we've got the rain mill, which will make us some flour and some other stuff. Lovely. We need to install one more rain engine. But we need pipes. So we're gonna go ahead and start making pipes again. But also, we're gonna utilize this rainwater. And as you can see, it begins draining the rainwater for extra production, extra speed, and extra resolve. You are mostly here to make flour. That's going to be the big thing for you. And then we can turn that flour into pies. Small trapper camp is no longer useful to me, so I'm going to ditch it. I see we've got a little bit of blight here. Doesn't seem to be affecting us too badly, though. You'll note down here, it says the percentage that it expects, the percentage of blight rot that it expects to get before the end of the storm. If this is over 100%, then you want to get something done to try to deal with it, because if it gets to 100%, then it'll kill a random, or it'll kill some random villagers. Uh, for right now, we're going to lower our hostility to keep people from leaving. And then we'll grab our brick oven, connect pipes, which finishes our installation. Let's start with a cornerstone. Extra stone is excellent. Extra, like, speed on wood cutting is better. Up next, we got to make a blight post and five purging fire. And hey, how convenient. We got the blueprint for it. Okay. It's a warm place, so obviously lizards will be very happy there. And once again, we are going to stick to using coal instead of wood because it is more efficient. We only need five. We got newcomers incoming. Got plenty of grain, but all the rest of this food is super useful, so we're going to do that. We've got a lot of people without homes right now, so we got to fix that. I think we can just put another housing complex right here. Again, the fact that the two buildings are right next to each other here is not going to stop the, uh, the folks from accessing it, so don't worry about that. Obviously, I would rather have a path in between the two, just for aesthetic purposes, but it doesn't actually matter. A 
rebuild this press. And uh, how am I doing on tools? I've been making tools, right? I've also been making barrels. I've got six. So that's enough for me to send one of these to the Citadel. Oh. Oh. We got our five purging fire. And now we want to burn three blight rot cysts and we want to use a hundred units of storm water, which we're already almost there. We're also going to start using drizzle water to make more pies more quickly. And then I would need clearance water to make this one more usable. We'll connect pipes, but we don't have any clearance water just yet. I want to be using lots and lots of rainwater at the moment because I want to get three cysts going. We have three currently, so by the end of the next storm, I should be good on this order. It occurs to me that I never made a trading post this time around, so I'm going to do that now. Grab the clan hall. Not a lot of space for it. And we should have, yes, here we go. Boom, that's three down instantaneously. We'll go ahead and pick up some tools, some mushrooms, some barrels. And then what do I need? I need to send or open three abandoned caches. We've already done one. We need to complete a Forbidden Glade event. And we need to make the Clan Hall, which we're already in the middle of doing. So, Forbidden Glade, that's what we're looking for. There's one up here. I don't know if we're going to get that one, and that's actually an important thing to note. You don't have to do all of the orders. In fact, there are achievements for beating levels without using orders at all. Uh, we're not doing so well on Resolve at the moment. But if we sacrifice just a little bit of coal, that should get us back up to a place where everyone's in positive Resolve. Just in time to keep one of the beavers from going home. Okay. Survivor bonding, bonus speed, bonus resolve, one of my favorites. However, we did make an empathy decision, which does lower our hostility, which is also nice. We're still going to pick survivor bonding. You got anything for me? For every 12 vegetables produced, we get plant fiber. That's super useful. Other than that, though, you don't really have anything that I need. We'll move the Stonecutter camp over here. Now, we haven't looked at Sea Marrow yet. Sea Marrow is one of my favorite deposits because it's a very efficient fuel, and while you're gathering it, you can use the wood that you've got to make planks and to make buildings and to make other things. Same deal with coal. What do we have the most of? Humans and lizards. We'll, we'll pick the lizard house this time. And we'll just make a couple of those. And we've got plenty of tools, so we're gonna go ahead and send a couple of caches to the citadel. I think we've got another one over here, yeah. Hold up. yeah. Now, if this wasn't a tutorial stage, I'd be really concerned with how many people aren't being given jobs at the moment. But it's only a tutorial, so I'm not too worried about it. 
I guess we'll start making our way towards this forbidden glade up here. folks established in the clan hall, which means all camps produce 100% greater yield except for woodcutter camps. And then if we start making some training gear, and we've already got 100 incense, so we'll start, we'll start uh, fulfilling religion pretty quick. But I'm pretty sure, let's go to the recipes panel, we do have the ability, I think, to make training gear over at the smelter. Yeah. So we're going to start doing that, and they're going to start making some training gear. That should make my people very happy. I really don't need any more newcomers, so I'm not going to pick them up at all. Got our three caches opened. Now the only order left is the Forbidden Fruit, which we are currently working toward. moment we get that open, we are immediately, because it's one of our orders, going to begin cutting our way towards this Forbidden Glade. Alright, what do we got in here? We've got a Rain Spirit Totem, which we are going to just burn down. Nice and simple. We've got some people here that we're going to send to the Citadel. Because, again, we do not need more people right now. Overpopulation can really screw up a run. So be aware of that. I always like to make a small warehouse nearby a Forbidden Glade. Because that way, when we get into the Forbidden Glade, assuming that this is actually built... Whatever resources we need for the Forbidden Glades event, we don't have to go all the way back to the main warehouse. We can just get it from that one. But it looks like we're probably going to end up winning this run before we even get to the Forbidden Event. We have a 105% chance of corruption, and watch what happens. We've got all these Blight Rot cysts all over the place, but watch what happens to that number as we begin to pop them. You see, this thing that's filling up, every time we, we burn some Blight Rot, it actually goes back down. And with that, we finish up our run and head back to the world map. So, that is the fourth and I believe final tutorial. Next, we're going to be continuing to make our way towards this bronze seal. Possibly by doing the Royal Woodlands again. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be our spot for next time. Or, we could go into here, which is the Scarlet Orchard. I don't know, I'll make that decision between now and next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll see you then.